Hello, Michigan Realtors. This seems like a good time of year to remember a 1990s New York case involving a buyer who, after learning that the house he had purchased in rural New York was widely reputed to be possessed by ghosts, sued the seller for failing to disclose that fact. Well, the seller didn't deny it. In fact, for years the seller had promoted the home as Riverfront Victorian with ghost. The home had been included in a walking tour, it had been advertised as having a ghost, and had been the subject matter of a Reader's Digest article as well as multiple newspaper articles. So with all of that publicity, how did the buyer not know about the phantasmal reputation of the premises? According to the court, the buyer was not a local, being from New York City, and therefore had no familiarity with the folklore of the small village of Nyack, New York. The court found that because there was no way for the buyer to discover the home's reputation, the seller had a duty to disclose it. Now remember, this case was decided in the early 1990s. Presumably with online searches and the like, today's buyer would have a much harder time convincing a court that he had had no way of discovering the home's reputation. The court held that while the buyer did not have a ghost of a chance of recovering damages, it did allow the buyer to back out of the sale. The court stated, it should be apparent, however, that the most meticulous inspection and the search would not reveal the presence of poltergeists at the premises or unearth the property's ghoulish reputation in the community. Therefore, there is no sound policy or reason to deny plaintiff relief for failing to discover a state of affairs which the most prudent purchaser would not be expected to even contemplate. Now, it is important to keep in mind that it was not the alleged presence of the ghost, but the home's reputation that the court found the seller had a duty to disclose. This is not the only case involving an alleged spiritual defect in a home. Several years earlier, a California broker had been held liable for failing to disclose the fact that a murder had occurred in the home. In that case, the buyer had sued the seller and the real estate agent after she had learned that a murder had occurred in the home 10 years earlier. Now, the trial court dismissed the action, finding that there had been no allegations of concealment of a material fact. Now, the appellate court reversed rejecting the notion that only physical defects can be material defects. The appellate court here said the buyer should have been given an opportunity to prove her allegation that the decade-old murder has a significant effect on market value. As with the New York case, the concern was not that the house was damaged, but that its reputation in the community negatively affected its market value. These cases caused a panic across the country as to whether brokers had a duty to disclose psychological defects. Several states, including Michigan, then passed statutes stating that brokers have no duty to disclose such defects. The Michigan Occupational Code currently provides that real estate brokers and salespersons shall not be liable for failing to reveal that the property was the site of a suicide, murder, or other occurrence prohibited by law which had no material effect on the condition of the real property or the improvements located on the real property. Now, the Occupational Code provision only protects real estate licensees and does not protect sellers. Nonetheless, it is unlikely that a Michigan court would find a seller liable for failing to volunteer that a home is haunted or that a murder or other crime has occurred in the home. Under the law in Michigan, sellers do not owe a general duty to the buyer to volunteer information about a home. Instead, Michigan home sellers have a duty to honestly answer the questions on the seller's disclosure statement. Fortunately, the presence or suspected presence of ghosts is not a question on the seller's disclosure statement. And with that, thank you so much for tuning in to this Letter of the Law, and please be safe out there. Oh,